Mr. Heath. I also student taught here for Dennis Shepard, I think he's down there. And one thing that uh, he made me do, and I'm glad I did, was go to observe George Heath. <laughs> Dan Taylor and I taught here from 77 to 2000, and I worked with Deaf Mary Hard of Hearing Kids. I'm Doug Kraft. I taught here from. I, I was here for 20 years of my 30 in Jeff County from 1976 to 1996. I taught right across the hall from Mr. Heath. I was in N13, and he was in the West Complex, and yeah. we used to talk all the time across and during passing periods and what have you. So, anyway, awfully nice to be here tonight. Larry Allen, I, uh, I've got, I started in 1973 at Wee Beach Junior High School. And left Jefferson. I was here for a few years, and it was just a real pleasure, and it was, it learned a lot from the great Mr. George Heath. So it's just fun. Bill Palmer, um, yeah. 92, no, 82, to, uh, 92, I was uh, history and economics, and uh, Mr. Heath hired me uh, for my first permanent full-time job. Uh, I'm Bob Campbell, I started. Yeah. One of the best days of my life, and I didn't know it at the time, was when Mr. Heath came up to me and said, how would you like to team teach with me? And we did that for about three years, and I learned what an amazing teacher was and how to become one. And I don't think that would have happened, but I owe so much to Mr. Heath. My name is Bob Putka, and I was in the math department from 75 through 1979, and then I came back in 82 to 83. And one of the things I remember about Mr. Heath was his enthusiasm for learning. Uh, walking by his classroom numerous times uh, in the same area, he'd have dual slideshows going, and he'd be bouncing back and forth between each slideshow. And that, and that enthusiasm for education was phenomenal, and that's one of the things that I took away uh, in my career uh, from Georgia. One other thing I guess I wanted to say about Mr. Heath, I mean, of all the things he could do, he knew he had, he knew something about each kid in his class, and he uh, had a connection with them. If there was a kid kind of having a bad day, not that you could have one in high school, you know, he, would, he would sit on their desk, look them right in the eye, use their name, and then come up with something like, how did Constantinople become? <laughs> I'm Diana Leno. I I am old and I feel really old. <laughs> I started before Jefferson High School here. This building was built. I started at the old Jefferson, which we called Tin City, over I think on about 22nd and Eaton or somewhere over there, uh, in March of 1959, and I uh, retired from Jefferson in 1993. For one uh, part of the year I taught English, <laughs> and then uh, moved in very quickly into the business classes. Um, what I remember about George is the helmet he wore, <laughs> that tin helmet that he wore when he was talking about the World War I, I think it was. <laughs> but also, you know, George and I started almost at the same time. I've got him beat by a couple of years and uh, he's a wonderful, wonderful person. I'm Dennis Shepard. I uh, uh, 
chapter 67 uh, to 73. Um, had three daughters that also graduated from Jefferson High School. And uh, I, I did some coaching track, cross country basketball. And I think the, the one wonderful thing about George, he made education fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Kathy Kirkland. I didn't teach here. I was an aide and a secretary from 1977 to 2004. Yeah. I also walked, uh, worked the ball games, especially basketball, and what I remember about George is running around with a stack of papers to grade. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Newton. I was Cheryl Doherty when I was a financial secretary here. I was Cheryl Barber when I was a student here. I graduated from here in 1966, and Miss Lano, bless her heart, was my accounting teacher, and I've been doing accounting most of my life. <laughs> I didn't have George as a, as a teacher, but I remember him, and we reconnected more when I was uh, the, the financial secretary here, and we've done lots of sporting events together. So I thank the world of George. My name is Tim Kane. I am proud that I was able to work with George from 1980 to 83. The thing I remember most about him was when he would describe the Roman orgies <laughs> and he would depict the aftermath, which included him getting on his hands and knees, on his desk, and regurgitating. <laughs> My name is Oscar Fonseca, and I graduated from here in 1998. I taught here from 2007 until 2010 on a special ed, and I worked for the Title I office and the wrestling coach here at Jefferson. Um, I did not have the pleasure of having Mr. Beath in class, but uh, he always searches us out at the Pepsi Center every year for the state tournament. You can't imagine how much work he must have done to get this together. And I'm extremely flattered by all this attention, believe me. Uh, one thing that, uh, that uh, we should mention, sometimes people from other schools will say something about Jefferson. I will say, this is, I'm sure, the only school in the state that has two people in government. One, Eddie Perlmutter, as a U.S. congressman in the House of Representatives, who's been re-elected probably five or six times, and also Brian Boatwright, who's in the state Supreme Court. I am sure that no other school in the, in the state can bring of two important people like that in such high places. Now, for all you, I think my past is pretty well uh, talked about up here already. You know, in the old days, back even as far back as the 60s, I used to go to the state basketball tournament out at the Coliseum. And I saw people working there, and I thought then, way back in the 60s, wouldn't that be a great job to have with a person who's retired? <laughs> So sure enough, the summer after I retired, which was 93, so this was the summer of 94, all right, I applied and got on at the Colorado Rockies. And I've worked there for 22 years until, until finally I got so old that I figured it was about time to hang it up. I mean, you stand on the hard concrete for like six hours in 90 degree heat. Believe me, for a guy that's over 80 years old, that's not easy. 
So I gave that up, but I'm still at the Pepsi Center. <laughs> and by the way, as you mentioned, I still do high school football over at Trailblazer Stadium. So I've done that for like over 40 years. Wow. Of course, I started up at Reed Stadium, which was really kind of a neat place because it was real close to here. And then when they tore that down, then when, that down, when they tore that down, then of course I went to travel place. As a matter of fact, I had a state playoff game last night. He mounted against TJ. So I'm still hard at it over there. And, and as I say, I still work for Pepsi Center for both the Avalanche and the Douglas. So hopefully, when you guys go down there, you can drop by on the first level and say hi. Okay, I've got one last, one last history uh, uh, lesson to give. It's a short one. <laughs> Back in Beagle, England, they did call counties, counties, they called them shires. And of course we have like New Hampshire and uh, the Berkshire Mountains and so forth. Okay, and it was up to the king to appoint the chief lawmaking or law enforcement person in that shire. And he was called a reed. And of course we have the last name Reeves. You know, you see that every once in a while. All right, so you can imagine what happened. They were the, the reeve of the Shire. In other words, the Shire reeve, 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 Shire reeve. Thank you. Thank you. 